Uh, Head Over Heels is musical I never expected to be writing, but uh, now that I've begun, it's it's become just a a wonderful wonderful project. Uh, Head Over Heels is a mashup a little bit of two very different worlds that maybe shouldn't work together, but seem to work together very well <laughs> so far. Uh, and that is the world of the Go Go's. Uh, the entire score is is on the catalog of the Go Go's. Uh, you know, a rock band formed in 1978, uh, the first all female rock band. And they are scoring uh, my version of a story by Sir Philip Sidney called The Arcadia that was written in about 1570. So the entire show is set in the Elizabethan era of these wonderful, wonderful rock songs by the Go-Go's. So the, the whole idea for Head Over Heels came about uh, just this, yeah, on, on a bit of a whim to say, can these two dis different worlds work together? Um, I've been wanting to adapt the, the Arcadia by Sir Philip Sir Philip Sidney for 20 years uh, and had never quite found the venue and I thought gosh I wonder if it would work uh, with this these this amazing catalog of go-go songs and as I began to assemble it it really did seem to work because I'm writing in verse I am a pentameter very very heightened language uh, and because music is itself heightened uh, the flow between them is quite quite easy actually uh, you know, more and more, I think we're seeing, uh, because people have so much access to media, mashups of very, very different styles and, and different, uh, uh, you know, formulas put together to create something entirely new. And I love mashup. It's where I write as a comedian. Uh, I, the Further Adventures of Head of Gobbler that I did here a few seasons back was the ultimate mashup in a way. So putting these two together in a way you know, the story by itself is is very moving story about love uh, in different generations. And by putting it with this music by the Go-Go's, both of them are, are elevated in a way to become something completely different. Um, I suppose for me, the idea of a mashup, I think we talk a lot in the theater about being transported to different times with plays. Um, I, unfortunately, am someone who stays firmly grounded in the sometimes uncomfortable seat I'm sitting on. So the only real reality I can acknowledge is I'm sitting in a theater watching a play with a lot of other people. Um, so what a mashup you know, allows me to do is to basically embrace that as the primary world. Um, so that we're not pretending that, you know, the play itself is in Elizabethan times. Um, and in fact, the characters uh, involved in this journey are all in a fictional Greece anyway, um, before they sort of all decamp to what really was the forerunner to the Forest of Arden um, in Philip Sidney's world. Um, so none of these worlds, in my mind, could ever be, quote-unquote, authentic. Um, and in fact, we would be shooting ourselves in the foot if we try to do justice to one idea over another. So the idea of just allowing them all to collide and coexist in this one space allows the piece to attain a here and now presentation that we find very exciting. Um, and I suppose, you know, to me, the ultimate mashup is, uh, has always been Madonna's Vogue video that she did on the MTV M Movie Music Awards in 1991. You know, there is, like I said, this collision of heightened language in the show, but then the heightened language of music as well. So the flow is much easier than it sounds. You know, and then I have been working very, very hard to not make this like a parody of, you know, someone's version of the way people used to talk, that I'm actually trying to use the meter uh, in a way to elevate the emotion and make it more expressive and not do a lot of like contemporary drop-ins of you know, references like Beyonce or anything, because I just, I find that so tiresome. Like, we want to go really, really sincerely into the hearts of these characters. But it'll be funny, I promise. <laughs> the story, I think, is um, extraordinary in every way, um, in the source novel at least, you know, um, and, and the brief background about it really is that um, Philip Sidney is rumoured to have been Queen Elizabeth's lover. And um, they had a big spat because, you know, um, he wouldn't be okay with her taking on the Duc d'Alençon as her um, as a consort, you know, when those negotiations were happening. Uh, and so he was banished from court. And off he disappeared to his sister, the Countess of Pembroke's house, to, like, you know, uh, get away from court. And so he spent this entire time in exile.
exile um, in his sister's castle, writing this enormous book, and it's thousands of pages long, and there are eclogues and editions, and the material, it's one of the most, in an odd way, it's an experimental novel. <laughs> there are so many different forms he hits. And so in my mind, uh, you know, he wrote this entire thing as a huge apologia to his queen. Um, so in some sense, it's a very early example of someone trying to understand the nature of what love is mm -hmm. in a time when love was considered a sickness um, in conventional Elizabethan popular thinking. Um, and you get this amazing source story um, that considers love in its very various and many um, manifestations um, from so many different social strata um, in, in the characters that, that Sidney created. And what's amazing about um, you know how it transfers today is that the questions themselves um, have become so much deeper and so much more relevant mm -hmm. um, you know how it is one finds somebody to love and what that love may mean um, and you know when we look at the journey between 1570s to today um, you know love being something primarily governed as um, an accidental afterthought after the marriage contract has been signed to the primary force through which we would get married to someone or it becomes a primary reason as to why we would marry someone is love. Um, that journey is, is, is insanely huge. Um, and so we, in some sense, I think this musical will examine um, a lot of those manifestations of the idea of love through the ages, um, through this particular lens. You know, what, I, what I love about the story is the spirit with which it was written. Um, that in a way it may have been an apologia to the queen, but at the same time, it was written to make his sister laugh. And he <laughs> gave her this note and called the, sh uh, called the, the story uh, a trifle and that triflingly handled. And so there are these wonderful moments of comedy in it. And, um, you know, I do put my own spin on it throughout and change the saddest characters here and there, but I've worked very hard to also keep that effervescent spirit alive in the show. Um, and it turns quite serious. He does an unbelievable thing uh, late in the story uh, that you wouldn't just you just wouldn't do in a comedy. I'm not going to give it away, but that I also kept um, because he's it goes beyond comedy to me. The story. Yeah. For um, for audiences um, used to come into Oregon, what's exciting about this particular story is it obviously predated Shakespeare by um, you know twenty odd, odd years, um, but in it um, uh, there's a literary precedent for so much that Shakespeare then makes very popular later. Um, really, you know, the main family um, in Head Over Heels and in Arcadia um, leave their home and go off on an adventure to discover themselves in a forest. Um, and so we have the literary precedent here for what will become the Forest of Arden. Um, it is a pre-Arden Arden, where um, there is a basic understanding that to be one with nature is to be one with your own id, and that's the only way you could be true to yourself. Um, the discovery of self-awakening and self-discovery can't happen in the structure of court or city. It can only happen outside. Um, and that is very exciting and, and I really feel like if we've done our job right, everyone watching it will feel like it's a lost Shakespeare play, this thing, you know, it won't, won't feel much different, like somebody's come along and put in a bunch of songs, uh, but that they've been integrated and the entire experience will feel a little bit like um, something Shakespeare left behind for us to rediscover years and years later.